I think that, that uh, the mining industry globally is going to be more and more important during the next 10 years or perhaps even 15 years. Most people in mining and exploration are optimists, so uh, we always look further out than a year or two in, in, in sort of the global economy and what the metals might be doing. But I'm, I'm reasonably certain that the metals prices are going to stay strong for the next 10, 15 years, say, as we see growth in the BRIC countries like Brazil, Russia, China and India. We haven't even seen India come on to really strong on the, on the international market. So a country like that alone can really drive, uh, drive the uh, global economies. We see now uh, the European Union is ramping up their activities on raw materials. The European Union is one is the most uh, import dependent part of the world in terms of, of uh, metals. Uh, and now since both Sweden, Finland, part of the European Union, uh, Brussels are looking at uh, the northern part of Europe. Because here we have wealth in, in uh, minerals. You're lucky, you have a very bright future in mining here in Lapland. As I mentioned, the Fennoscandian Peninsula probably is the most active and has the greatest potential in Europe. You've got a very stable investment environment, you have a strong economic record, you have a very strong Finnish geological survey that makes it very easy for foreign companies to uh, come in and survey and get the information they need to make uh, to make their assessments on their development plans. And I think here, in particular, it's, I was really surprised about the opportunities that are here in, in uh, Finland, Sweden, even Norway. Uh, you know, that, this area has so much to offer explorationists, um, you know, and mining companies, but certainly the exploration side, the upside here is huge. There's a lot of room for discovery, and a lot of room for discovery uh, that's close to surface. I think as uh, anyone knows the area is that we're talking about 2% outcrop for most of the areas. Most of the known deposits have been outcropping. 98% of the ground is undercover. Now, there's only very few uh, blind, as we call them, discoveries. And uh, example being Sakati. So I really do feel that there's great potential in this part of the world. Operational environment here is excellent. Uh, we all know that um, Finland and Sweden, they are ranked as in the group of five best mining countries, mining exploration countries in the whole world. Legislation is working. We have good infrastructure. I think that the Fennoscandian exploration and mining boom uh, I think personally is still in its early phases. So I still it's a, lot, lot, a long way to go and many more discoveries to be made. We have been exploring quite uh, intensively until now and that has results in good results for us. Some good um, discoveries very close to our existing mines. It has given the expansion of the ITIC project. It has given us the possibility to work on the uh, gold mine near Bolinen, which will be open uh, next year. It has also given us the opportunity to, to discover and now put in place the expansion at Garpen Bay in the central part of Sweden. Uh, we have a project at uh, Otokumpu in uh, eastern Finland uh, and uh, we are uh, refurbishing an old mill and we are uh, building a new underground mine uh, and both of those are nearing completion so we expect to commence commercial production uh, sometime uh, first quarter next year and reach uh, break even cash flow and start actually making a profit in the third quarter of next year so and then we hope to then expand and grow that operation into something bigger. We have our Kittila mine here in Kittila up and running and we are looking at expansions to that. So we continue to do exploration and uh, I think we have good chances to expand on the reserve base. Uh, we are also looking at other projects in the surroundings. We have a regional exploration program. We are in the commissioning phase and after that we are being in a ramp up phase aiming at being a big gold producer from next year. We will reach full production next year with an annual 
production of about 3,700 kilos of gold. I think also that both Sweden and Finland are attractive for people, young people, students from other parts of Europe. If you want to become a geologist or a mining engineer, you can study it here and you can also find work here. If you talk to the industry today, they, they kind of talk about something they, that they would like to call a skills crisis, because there is a deficit of, of uh, uh, educated and experienced uh, engineers and geologists and so forth. So in order to be successful, you need skilled labor. And, uh, in order to get skilled labor, you need the youngsters to go into the proper educational systems at universities and so forth. The Kittila mine has had a huge impact on the economy of the Kittila municipality. We had had a significant growth in the tax income, a significant increase in employment, and we are the only municipality in Lapland that has a growing population. We have the image of, uh, of uh, tourism uh, county and mining is uh, uh, widely diverse in the economical structure and that's of course good that we, we can rely on, on other businesses also than, than only tourism and it creates uh, new kind of jobs. Lapland is a, it's a great place to operate. The infrastructure is good and I think what's very important is the mentality of the people is generally very positive to mining and exploration. I think that these, this conference for this area is perfect uh, for attracting mineral exploration companies, junior companies. They should be here from Canada, they should be here from uh, the United States. Uh, we, we, Australia, this is, this is a place to come if you want to get into the last area of Europe, really, that has a, a great uh, arena for discovery. The conference probably uh, would, uh, is, is a little bit of an undiscovered jewel in that many of the international investment community don't come here. Um, I think they should come. It takes always a while to get into new discoveries. You, you, the exploration activities had been very low in the 80s, 90s, and it's really in the 2000s that the activities have been picking up. And we do start to see now the results. The Barents region, or the northern part of Fenoscandia, we have a bright future in, in, in the mining business for many, many years to come. I really believe that this is just to start what, what's going to happen here in Fenoscandia, in Finland, in Sweden. The operating environment in Fenoscandia is, is excellent. I mean, in Finland, where we are today, you know, there is a historic mining cluster. Finland has the best mining equipment manufacturers in the world. We use them in all our operations around the world. Its regulatory is very good, very clear, strict rules, which is good for us to work to. New mining law come through from Finland, very good as well. Doing things that we've already, always done, you know, keeping landowners informed, and the way the, the money's go to the, to the landowners, I think is a very, very clever system. It's a great place to be.